David Sarachani, uh, former captain of the Cricket Cranes, how has been the lockdown for you? Been very busy on social media. Should we say you've become an influencer in this, uh, in, during this period of lockdown? Well, I would be honored if you if you called me as such, but uh, I, I think I'm very far from that. But uh, generally speaking, for me, I'm, uh, I'm grateful to be alive. Uh, lockdown, of course, was something that many of us didn't expect. But based on the pandemic and uh, what was going around, especially in the other countries, especially the European and uh, Asian countries, I think uh, it was needed for a country like ours, largely for us to be able to, to retain our, our lives as human beings. So for me, it's been tough. But uh, I mean, push came to shove and uh, pushed in a corner, but I'm glad to be alive. You had uh, a viral video of you. Uh, I mean, uh, the idea must have come from uh, what uh, Geoffrey Archer did uh, of uh, the England Lions. <laughs> Uh, you did something when you're putting on your cricket cranes uniform. Uh, what was the inspiration about and who took the video? We are more interested in who, who was the camera, who was behind the camera. Well, uh, really, as, as you said, uh, at that time, so many things had been uh, shut down. Uh, we were forced to change our lives. Uh, we were forced to walk out of uh, what our normal routine, routine kind of days. Uh, so for me, I looked at it as, uh, as a cricket. I spent over 10 years on the cricket field. Uh, most, most of my weekends were spent on the cricket field. So for me, Having been in my house on a weekend, it just seemed absolutely ridiculous. Uh, it made me miss the sport even more. It, it just, watching that Geoffrey Yacha video, of course, I had to make sure I could give it a Ugandan feel. Not just a Ugandan feel, but make sure I could give it a, whole, a feel of myself as Davis, considering I stay in a place, a reasonably good place. Uh, we have a dog nearby. I felt, uh, unfortunately for me, my daughter was around at, at the time, Kwezi Casey Karashani, she was around. So, uh, and she, she seems to like things like those. So I got her behind the camera and uh, she kind of scripted what we made, you know, I might have needed to do. Unfortunately, we were able to pull off something that uh, we, we didn't intend it to really go viral. We were looking to make sure we can push out a lot more awareness to make sure, especially athletes, can learn to stay home, especially in the, the lockdown. So for it to have gone viral, one, I'm grateful, but I give a lot of credit to her and uh, basically for the viewers that watched it. I hope uh, the Minister of Health doesn't owe you anything like uh, some people are right now. No, 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 no. Uh, but speaking of cricket, we want to know where does uh, or where does your journey start to, uh, with cricket? How did you get involved in this game, the gentleman's game? Uh, my journey started from uh, Lohan Academy when I was in primary school. I was fortunate to have played uh, other racket sports. I played badminton, table tennis and uh, lawn tennis. Uh, so, and I played those for Uganda. So fortunately for me at that time, I was in a school that had a lot of Asians and the fact that they knew that I was playing those uh, racket sports, they figured I might have the hand-eye coordination to come and uh, hit a, a cricket ball and for me, that is literally where the journey started. I got to, I came to play mini cricket on this oval, this particular oval. I wasn't that interested in the sport really. I used to find it a bit too long, it just seemed too technical. I was more used to the other easier, like uh, lone sports. So for me to have gone into cricket, it was a bit of a strange journey, but it's, it's a journey that I'm really, really good. You are one of the, I mean, shining products out of uh, the very popular schools development program um, started by Uganda Cricket in the early 2000s. Uh, take, talk us through about your school in cricket and uh, how it was for you in Tare before you moved to Mweri and then uh, and, and after that. I think as I said, uh, I've, I've been fortunate to have been uh, in that group of players that actually came through the school development program and managed to go and represent our nations at uh, the most senior levels. So for me, uh, that's something that I am grateful for. It's an honor to have served in, the, in that capacity, any other capacity. But going to the school development program, as I said, besides the primary school, uh, I went to Ontario School, which I'm very proud of. I was there for four years. Uh, around that time, I came for an academy, an under 15 academy, I think. Uh, and during that academy, I was spotted by Samji, Sam Wadusimbi, who is a legend and probably one of the finest cricketers Uganda has ever produced. Uh, at that time, he spotted me and thought I could be able to, to become an addition to the Great Wanderer side. I think I was about, well, about 13 at the age at that time. Uh, so he invited me to play a game, which I came and I played for. You must remember that uh, my first club game for Wanderers was uh, Samji's last game. So there were massive steps for me to, to get into. All that, especially for a kid from Terry School, I was small, I was in S2. So for me to have been uh, spotted by a legend like Samji, for me, it gave me a lot of inspiration. So I played under 15. I was fortunate to have captained an under 15 team, I think, which of course, which you are, you are part of. Uh, my journey again continued in Terry School. I went on to play, I think, at the under 17 level. Uh, all at Terry School. Uh, I played with a, quite a number of uh, very talented guys. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have uh, the, the luck or the, the ability to make it to the high, highest level, especially at uh, underage cricket. But uh, right after, I think, at my S4 in the school's cricket week, I became the best bowler in that particular edition. Uh, fortunately for me, again, 
I was I had already played with you, the Tovis guys were in Mwiri, and uh, I was able to have caught the eye of some some people that some senior obis at uh, Mwiri, and uh, people I was encouraged to apply to go to Mwiri. I felt uh, Mwiri would have helped prosper my cricketing career. It was harder for me to play league cricket when I was in Tariff, because Mbara is a three and a half four hour drive. So I looked at uh, the Muri option as uh, an ability for me to, to, to harness my cricketing ability. At that time, I wasn't doing too badly. I was already rubbing shoulders with uh, guys who were in the great schools, the Muris and the Gingers of the world. So I figured I would take up the opportunity. Uh, I crossed the Nile, uh, of course, leaving entirely to go to Muri, up the hill. Uh, I, was, I was there for two years, two years that I'm grateful for. I do not take for granted. Uh, I, I received a lot of respect going on to, to Muri. Actually, that was my first bit of uh, experiencing celebrity status. I was very, it was a bit strange for me. I come from a very, very humble background, very humble family. So for me to have gone to Mwiri, a school that was totally different from what I'd come from, uh, I was respected not just as a cricketer, but the fact that I, I didn't think I was such a bad person. I ended, I ended up picking up some leadership positions in Mwiri. So for me, uh, going to Mwiri gave me an opportunity I played against alongside some really, really great guys. Uh, two years we were captained by yourself, we were able to win the school's cricket week twice. Uh, guys I played with at that time for me, I think for me that is where my cricketing career probably took a totally different turn. I think it got to, I only got better when I went to Muri, of course I could, I could play more league cricket. I was fortunate to have been coached by Kenneth Kamika and Frank Nsubuga, who were mentors of mine already. So for me, my journey in school, school cricket was, was tremendous, but I feel it was a very lucky. So would it be right to say that uh, Muri made you? <laughs> well, I, I would say so. I cannot say they didn't contribute. I think they actually largely contributed, especially to my cricketing career. I was able to play for some big clubs, the Ready Wonders, as, as, as I'd mentioned. I was able to actually penetrate. I made a name for myself all the time. Well, that's when I was in Mui. That's when my really cricketing career took off. Uh, I, I would say that uh, you were very successful as a junior cricketer as well. Before you stepped up to the national team, you were part of two, two editions of the World Cup in 2004 and 2006. Yeah. Uh, talk us through that experience playing at the World Cup and the highest level. Dennis, you and I know it's, it's the World Cup. Uh, there's really not too much to say. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's the creme de la creme, the best in the world at that age group. You get, you meet, you're getting to meet guys that are gods, puny gods in their countries. So to be, to rub shoulders with guys like those, it's, it's, it's a dream come true for, for many of us, at least I'm one of those that is very, very fortunate. And I, 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 whenever I have the ability or the chance to actually brag about it, it's something that I do. I, uh, I make sure anyone that has ears can actually know that I, I was fortunate to have played in uh, two World Cups. I think at that time uh, there was word that we might have been the first Ugandan team to have played in the World Cup, but later on we were told that there was a netball team, I think in 1978. So for us, being in the World Cup for me was an absolute honour. Being especially around the senior players, guys from England, from, the, from South Africa, India, guys we were always destined, we were sure that we were destined to, to play and become real greats in this world. Uh, who are some of the players you, you can remember who went on to become you know, international stars from the World Cup that you, that you played against? I think the biggest one is Alistair Cook, because Alistair Cook went on to captain England. He went on to score, if I'm not mistaken, he's the only English batsman to ever score 10,000 runs and more. So that, that of course, is a big player. Uh, you must look at Steven Smith. He came through an under-19 World Cup. Uh, Tim Bresnan, they played for England. You look at guys, the guys in India, the Robin Utapas. You look at uh, Ravi, Bopar, uh, Ravi Bopala in England. Some of those were my wickets, Ravi Bopala and uh, Samit Patel. They were greats of England. So for me, having picked up some of those, that adds value to me, a guy like uh, Ian Morgan. Ian Morgan went on to play, play for Ireland and went on to play for England, actually captain England to an ODI World Cup. So when, when you think, when I look back at it and I, and I, I go through the fact that I played alongside guys like those, I, I, I was in the same field against guys like those, it's something that I'm very grateful for. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they actually made it to those kind of levels. Uh, stepping up from uh, junior cricket and onto the national team, you got in the national team as a, you know, as a youngster. Uh, I think you, from that generation, it was yourself, Semanda, Patrick Ochan, yeah. uh, Hamza Saleh, Emmanuel Isanez. Uh, you stepped up into the national team yeah. and you know, and your stripes are there. Uh, how, how, what was the journey getting into the national team as a starter before you, you, know, you took up the leadership? Well, re well really for me it was, a, it was a, a baby walking, before you can even walk and uh, before you can, baby crawling before you can even walk and run. Uh, I, looked at the, I looked up at the national team players, especially guys like the John Lubias at the time, the Kamukas, Kenneth Kamuka. This is, I looked at them as really, really, not just exceptional players, but guys that we, we, we would look at as in, being in a different league. Not just for their cricketing abilities, but even their off-field kind of uh, behaviours. They, they, they portrayed the national team as, as the holy grail, really. So, 
first of all, being, being given the chance to actually train with them, rub shoulders, share dressing room, share training uh, regimens with some of those guys already for me was an honor. But I think I was lucky that I'd had, uh, especially the second World Cup, I'd had a reasonably successful under 19 World Cup for Uganda. So uh, I felt, being around the team at the time, I felt like uh, I, I, I had a bit of respect from those, some of those senior players. They knew that I had an idea about what I was doing. Uh, I, I, I had done well in the league, I had picked some of their wickets and uh, I was starting to feel that they felt that I, I had something that the national team could use. So for me, I would say it was a bit an, of an easier transition for me because I felt like the players at the time, the senior players, knew that I had some, something that I could add. Going on to captain the national team, how uh, there, were, there, were two, there were two times you were captain, you took yeah. some time off, then came back and still became captain of the team. Yeah. Uh, talk us through about the, your experience leading uh, leading uh, the cricket cranes through those uh, really <laughs> very difficult qualifiers uh, yeah. both times. Uh, Dennis, you must remember, of course, I played my first game for Uganda in the Atusha Cup, Memorial Cup. It was in Mombasa, that was 2005. Uh, I think in the, the following year, uh, I played my first recognized game for Uganda as a captain. I was already captain and I was on debut, so I was playing my first game and also captain. So it was... It was a bit of a bittersweet moment. It, in my opinion, I actually felt it was a little bit early, but the fact that uh, at that time the coach, Sam, Sam Orisimbi, he had so much faith in me and he knew that I had a pretty good idea about what I could do, uh, what I could add in terms of the captaincy for the team. I, I, I took it with both hands uh, and it's something I'm grateful for. I, I'm not one to back down to challenges, never been that way. So for me, handing the captaincy to me was something that uh, I knew it was always going to be challenging because I mean, I was going to have to, to call the shots uh, for lack of a better word, call the shots for a team that had guys like Kenneth Kamuka, there was Junior Kwebia, Joel Oluwain, all these were seasoned international cricketers, they had really done well, they were doing well at club level. So for me to have to call the shots in a dressing room like that was always going to be a challenge, but I, it was something that I, I was looking forward to because I knew I could make a worthy contribution and I want to believe that I actually did. So my first, my first uh, round as, as a national team camp was a bit difficult, as I said, because I was much younger. I was, I was in the process of trying to establish myself in the team because I'm, I'm one of those that believes that uh, a captain must be a player first. So it was key for me to make sure that uh, I earned my place in the starting eleven. Uh, as, as I've said on different platforms, I, was, I, I came in at a time where by Uganda used to play one spinner. But because I'd done too well in the league and I'd done well in the World Cup, I earned myself, I earned a slot in the national team. So I, I, I forced a bit of a change in the Ugandan setup whereby Uganda was now forced to actually play two spinners. So for me, it, it, it was a bit of a transition for Ugandan, Ugandan cricket at the time because now we had to change the format. They were playing two spinners and uh, three seamers and maybe an all-rounder. So for me to come in at the time, make that kind of change, transition for Uganda cricket, I believe I actually made a lot of value. I, I remember picking up quite some big wickets, the Steve Ticolos of this world and the Thomas Odoyos. I think for me, picking up wickets like those, it made my job the job a bit easy because the players got to believe that I could actually do the job. Uh, uh, talking, still talking about your leadership, uh, 2017, the World Cricket League in Kampala yeah. was the last time you were in charge of the team. Uh, do you feel like uh, the tournament, of course, didn't go so well, yeah. but do you feel like you still have some unfinished business because since then you have not yet played for the cricket cranes? Yeah, but especially that came at the end of my second spell as, uh, as the captain. Coming back to play for Uganda, I remember I took I had taken a break because I, I didn't believe, first of all, in uh, some of the the things that were being done in the top administration, I had challenges with those, I was, uh, and I'm a very straight, straightforward person, I had challenges with those. I always felt that they needed change or tinker a few things because I felt uh, player management needed to come high up in the, their priorities. Uh, that didn't happen all the time, that's why I walked away from the game. But later on, especially I was encouraged largely more by my teammates, the guys I'd played along with, the guys I'd fought battles with. And uh, I, was I was equally encouraged by the, the teams that we had played against. Teams were glad that I was not playing anymore, so that actually pushed me to actually come out and actually get to, to play again. So come, my second spell as captain, it, it was, I, I, I didn't find it too difficult. I felt like I was, I was ripe enough. At that time, I was actually mature enough. I had played international cricket already. Uh, I remember I had, we had won and I had been captain of an Africa T20 tournament here. So I already had success at the back of my mind. I knew that I could actually do the job. And the team at the time was uh, believed that I could actually help move them into the next direction. Uh, we played, of course, the 2017 tournament at home. Tough result, tough way to, to, to end uh, the tournament at home. We got relegated, unfortunately. Uh, the worst part of it is that I was the last wicket of our campaign. I remember I was, uh, was bowled in the, against the USA. Uh, I think after a very, very, very tough, it was a tough inning for myself and Senor Henry. I actually commend him for the effort, the fact that he had to just 
his one job was to just stay there and let me try and score the run. So it was a tough way to, to end my mini career at the time. But uh, I had had a word with the management because I felt at that time where I was, I felt uh, I needed to, to further my other careers. I would always had an interest in uh, seeking, going for further studies, uh, pursuing a different kind of career, which it may not have been cricket related. So for me, I felt at that time, because we got relegated, it came, whether we had gotten relegated or not, I felt at the time, I'd already done the pre-entries to, to try and get into law school. So for me at the time, it didn't matter what, what the result was. I was I already taken a decision that I was going to go back to school to try and achieve another bit of ambition that I'd had. So I'd always told them, I told the management that uh, it was always going to be hard for me to make the time to train as much as I used to. But I'd all, I made the promise to them that whenever I had the time to make any contribution, I would. Uh, I, and the management was aware I was scheduled and I was hoping to make uh, at least the squad, the training squad for this uh, World Cup League division that was, uh, that was postponed in July because I was sure then I would have been on holiday. I'd have had at least three to four months of serious and rigorous training. Uh, and I, I always felt that, uh, personally, I always felt that I had unfinished business. I've not been doing too bad in the league. I've been playing a couple of trial games. I was, I was uh, slotted into the Allied League. I didn't do too badly in that. So I always feel, I had the feeling and I still have the feeling that I, I wasn't doing too badly, especially for the Ugandan standard. I felt I could add one or two, I had some mileage in me to still run one or two races. Uh, I think people will hear it first that Davis is not yet retired, so <laughs> anytime we be playing for Uganda, we're still talking leadership. Uh, people always thought you were, uh, I don't know the right words to say, you were a bit tough uh, or basically you were no nonsense uh, kind of leader. Was that, I mean, is that a true assumption? Well, uh, I always like to believe in opinions. It's very key for us to, to think of ourselves only the way we want. Uh, it's key for us to listen to others around us. Uh, Dennis, you must remember that I have uh, human resource uh, expertise. So I, I feel like, and I grew up in a home whereby uh, there was a lot of, uh, I grew up in a reward and punishment kind of system. Growing up, bring, coming through my family, it was a reward. You did, you did well, you got rewarded. You did something bad, you got punished. So for me, and I grew up in a, world, in a family that was very straightforward. I'm fortunate that my parents were that straight for Mr. and Mrs. Karash and I thank them for, for whatever they did for me as, as an individual and my family. Uh, they were that straightforward. So it, it was easy for me to, to easily pick and transcend what I had, the way I had grown up into my cricket, the cricketing abilities. I, I always came across as very straightforward. I never used to like to beat around the bush and that is the way I am, not just on the cricket field, that is generally the way I am. Uh, I used to, f one of the challenges I found with the, the team is that um, many guys in the team never like to take a lot of uh, honesty. I, I, I don't think it's just the team. Generally, as human beings, we don't like to hear the truth. As I said, the truth hurts. Uh, for me, I never had a problem with it. I always liked people telling me the truth. And that's why I was, I was a huge fan of Bani Mohammed, one of our coaches, because he used to tell us as it was. He called a spade a spade. So for me, my style, I don't even want to call it a style. It was just a simple transition of how I had grown up in terms of leadership, just simply putting that onto a cricket field. Tell people what, sometimes tell them what they don't want to hear, but the truth, so that it gives you peace of mind. So for me, I always felt that I needed to tell the players what I personally felt. And I, I think for, for some players, it helped them. Guys like Baby, Mohamed Zadeus, I think guys like Brian, I always used to tell them, you guys were too, they're too similar. I always used to have challenges playing both of them. So I needed, I always used to tell them that they needed to up their skill level. And these were very, very good friends of mine. So if chances are, if I'd not told them that, Brian Masaba never would have become the batsman he has become. He never would become the Ugandan captain. Baby Mumza never would have become the, the reliable all-rounder that he is now for Uganda. Uh, guys like Achobe Atha, I used to have a lot of go at Achobe Atha a lot because I used to tell him straight up because I always felt he was too talented and he worked too hard for the results that he was giving us. So I always felt he, I needed to give him that extra push for him to actually give us some results. So for me, I'm glad I have no regrets about uh, my leadership style. Talking uh, things outside cricket, who is Davis Karashani? Uh, if people want to know, uh, besides what they see on social media yeah. and what I've read, who's Davis Karashani? In, a f in, a, in really, in, in a few words, uh, just to sum it up, uh, I, I believe I'm a very simple person, I'm a very approachable person. I think I'm a very down-to-earth person, I'm very God-fearing, I'm a Christian, I'm God-fearing, I'm a family man. I have three children whom I hope to raise seriously. I hope to be there for them. One day I hope to get married. Yes, you've heard this. Hopefully one day I get married eventually. Uh, but generally speaking, I think I'm a very simple, humble person, very approachable. Uh, I, 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 don't think, I don't think I can say too much. It's a very simple person, really.
You've continued your leadership uh, with, of course, being the president of uh, the entire league. Um, uh, something <laughs> the first uh, first league in the, in, in yeah, the land, the first, uh, the, the, the Lions League, they say, is the first. We don't yeah. know. No, they no, no, it is the first. There might have been another school that no, doesn't no, have no, social it's media. It's absolutely a fact. Uh, <laughs> but you, you continue to be involved uh, in leadership, uh, yeah. either at, uh, for, for the entire league. Uh, you also started a cricket academy. Do you have plans to, you know, to inspire the next generation of the people? I don't know if you're probably the right person asking that because uh, we are partners in this cricket academy and uh, one of our visions really is uh, we, we, we hoped to give uh, the next generation of cricketers a better life than we had. I think we had, a decent, we had decent cricketing careers on and off the field so for us our vision was largely to give the next generation a much better platform for them to harness their cricketing skills and also have uh, a life off, off the cricket field so for us that vision still exists, it's still there. Uh, we hope that we can actually uh, maybe after this pandemic uh, Scissors, we, we hope we can actually get that, that baby of ours and actually run with it, take it a lot more serious. We are looking into getting partners who have already expressed interest. We hope we can take it really to a next level. Uh, my leadership really with the entire Lion League, one, I must, again, uh, I humbly thank and I take the honor that uh, I was uh, voted uh, the president of the entire Lion League. I was a th I'm the third president of the entire Lion League, so I don't take that for granted. Uh, I had... Uh, a league that has 18 teams, 18, uh, men, 18 17 men's boys teams and uh, a, a ladies team. So I am grateful for that, that we, we have close to 400, 500 people every game, every Sunday. So for me to have, have even been part of the vision of having alumni school, school teams, school leagues in, the, in this country for me and looking at where it has grown, the magnitude has grown, it's, it's now being taken a lot more seriously. As a, as, as a corporate event, it's looked at as an advertisement platform. So for me, being the president right now of the league, is, uh, it's, it's an absolute honor. It's something that I hope I can take the league to the next level. Any chance that the three children will play cricket like uh, their dad? I, I actually hope so. I'm not, uh, I'm not one who's uh, torn on uh, forcing them to play cricket. I would be very, very grateful if they did. Uh, I try and at least uh, push the bat and the ball in their direction for them to g get a bit familiar with some of that equipment. I would, I would hope that they can actually pick up the sport, but for me, I'd be very comfortable if they picked up uh, any other sport. I'm, I'm a product of sport. I think sport gives a lot of uh, social development for a child. It teaches so many things, discipline, it teaches uh, teamwork, it teaches so many aspects of that uh, as human beings we need off the off, uh, sporting uh, arenas. So for me, I think I would be very glad if uh, my children can play some sport. Any final words for youngsters who would like to take up cricket? Uh, how do they do that uh, if they want to play cricket? Um, and any advice for those that are playing right now and they, you know, they look up to you to, to, to have a career as good as you've had? Well, uh, for me really, uh, cricket isn't rocket science. Uh, cricket is uh, an easy sport. It's a sport that is very, uh, very available to us. It's not as uh, alien as many people think. Uh, uh, there's a, first of all, there's a GeneX Academy that is around that can help. Uh, kids that want to get better in their sport. Uh, there's Little Stumps run by Naomi Kayondo, who is also a former Lady Cricket Cranes captain. Uh, we, we're trying to provide platforms for young children to, to, to be able to come out and actually learn to play the sport and enjoy the sport. Uh, so generally speaking, I think uh, cricket is very available. For me as, uh, as an individual, I, I would like one of my passing words really to, uh, to the next generation of cricket is uh, it's key for them to play sport, in particular cricket. Cricket is an absolute, it's a gem of a sport, uh, but also they need to be equally focused on your education. Education is, uh, is, is, is very important as well in life. So, and uh, the blend between uh, sport and education is, uh, is tremendous. It's something that gives you a career on the field and also off the field. And uh, I think it's something that uh, people should seriously consider. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Davis. Uh, nice chatting with you. You're welcome. And uh, we hope and pray that we'll see you playing for the cricket craze. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank you for your time.